This is the Virata Podcast. In this episode, we will talk with Portuguese Sahaja Yogi Luiz Garrido. Hello, Brazil! Welcome to our Virata Podcast. My name is David, and today we have a special guest here, Luiz Garrido. So, welcome to our Virata Podcast. Thank you for inviting us. It's a great honor to speak on this uh, webcast of yours. I've been watching some wonderful interviews you've done before. Oh, thank you. And learned a lot by listening to those interviews. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So it's a pleasure for us to have you here. You have been for so many years in Sahaja Yoga, so many stories with Shimataj. So I would like to start by asking you to tell the stories of your childhood when your seeking started. Uh, as a seeker, I was what you can call a Bible fanatic. Oh, I, really? start, I started like that at a very young age, reading the Bible. I was in love with the Bible mm -hmm. from a very young age. And um, I don't know, I had an experience once I heard my mom talking to a friend of hers and she said the name of, of Lord Buddha, Gautama Buddha, she said, you know. Mm -hmm. And that word was like magic in my, heart, in, my, in my mind, you know. I was so, so... I felt this something very important, Buddha, you know, I have to find Buddha, mm -hmm. something so important. I, I started looking for Buddha if, if I could, you know. And so, Luis, just perhaps to set up a little bit the story, so people who don't know, so Luis from Portugal, so grew up in a Catholic family, right? Yes, indeed. Catholic so to get this, uh, this knowledge of Sri Buddha was something exotic at that time. Right? And I didn't know anything about it. I was maybe 10 years old, first time I heard the, the name of Buddha, but immediately I was I can't understand something happened inside, just hearing that name. And I thought I need to find this, something very important. Later in life I found out the other aspects of uh, other religions. Mm -hmm. And I was also very interested to find out about Islam and about Judaism. And of course Hinduism, I was also very interested. I found out some things through books. Uh, I went to some uh, gurus, which happened to be not so good after all, those gurus. I tried many, many things, you know, uh, until one day, uh, I was already much older by the time I was, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 years old or 20, I came across William Blake and that mm -hmm. made a very big uh, change in me. I felt a desire to give up false gurus and uh, seeking of low quality to do with spiritualism and other things, you know, uh, just coming in contact with Lord Bo with uh, William Blake was a big difference in my life. Mm -hmm. And of course, later I found Shimataji's photograph on a window shop, you know, and I think that was helping me a lot during those days. And I was feeling a certain um, faith inside my heart that I was going to maybe meet Christ once. You know, so mm -hmm. I was continuously praying for Christ, praying for the Holy Ghost. And this must have been the effect of coming across William Blake and coming across the photograph of Sri Mataji. After so many years of wrong seeking and false seeking. My it's seeking interesting because actually Maria Amelia, we interviewed Maria Amelia previously and she also mentions that there were very good people in Portugal and that's why so many false gurus also came to the country. Yes, Sri Mataji said that to me as well, you know. There was uh, also the Portuguese people went to India mm -hmm. and made some mistakes there, you know, against Lord Shiva. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also did good things, it was a mix. But uh, what she told me is that uh, the seekers of truth are not to be blamed for the mistakes of the past of, sure. our, of our ancestors, you know. Mm -hmm. They did some good things, they did some wrong things, you know. They made a mistake or two there in India against Lord Shiva, the statues of Lord Shiva in Elora. They didn't show much respect, you know. So, yes, some uh, gurus came to Portugal, so there was some karma there. But that karma would not affect the genuine seekers of truth. Mm -hmm. you know? This is what Mother promised. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was very kind, you know. She highlighted some good things the Portuguese had done. So she was. She didn't want us to feel guilty for the sins of the past from our ancestors with sure. colonialism and all the mm -hmm. wrong things we had done. Mm -hmm. We had a big uh, heavy weight of guilt in us as seekers of truth. We felt guilty for many things. 
Mm -hmm. It was very easy trap to feel guilty. In fact, to remove that hurdle of guilt was quite hard in Portugal. Okay. You know, all this, we knew we had done lots of things that were wrong and our ancestors too. I think mother was uh, forgiving us for those. All mm -hmm. that history was being forgiven in us. So we are saying that I actually saw the mother's picture, you know, in a, in a, in a shop. So can you tell us a little bit the story of that? Yes, <laughs> that, in those days, uh, we had a very long law course, which was a six-year law course. And there were lots of exams. We had to have a written exam and an oral exam, lots of semesters. Mm -hmm. Because the year was divided into semesters, lots of units, lots of exams. Always an, an, an oral, oral exam, always, and a written exam for every unit. The course was getting tough, and so one of my colleagues had a, an uncle who was a great lawyer. So the idea came, before the exams, you go and see that lawyer and ask for some uh, help, you, would, you know, because he was considered such a great lawyer, that man. Mm -hmm. And this man used to ask us to wait outside his office. You know, he didn't want all the students in his, in his room. So. We had to wait outside, and in the streets, in that street, there was only one shop. It was a photographic shop. We had to be there mm -hmm. under the awning. The awning gives some shelter against the sun or the rain, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that shop, there was a, a big photograph of Shimataji because mm -hmm. um, when uh, Maria Amelia, in fact, the Sajogini and Arnaud, very important, very, very excellent people in our day. They were such yogis, but they got married in Portugal. They invited Srimataji, she came to the wedding. And uh, that photograph, uh, somehow he understood that mother was the most important person that he photographed. So he put the photo of Srimataji on that window. So we had nothing else to look, so we were looking at the photo of Srimataji. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, colleague of mine, she said that around, came from Bombay and she was Indian also, and mm -hmm. she had also, like mother, a big dot on the forehead, the red dot on the forehead. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she was always reminding us, look at the dot on the on this, faith, this photo, of, which was Sri Mataji. We didn't know it was Sri Mataji. <laughs> we thought it's just, it's a nice Indian lady, you know, with a big, big dot, you know, black and white photo, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the dot was not red on the photo, but in reality, mm -hmm. it's a red dot. And she used, used to tell us, make sure you look at the dot on the photo here of the lady. The lady happens to be Sri Mataji. When you go inside the law office, if my aunt is there and you look at the dot, she'll throw you out. She doesn't like people looking at the dot and uh, asking her what's the dot, is it blood, or she gets angry. So mm -hmm. now we've seen the dot, you are prepared. So we were looking at mother's photo without knowing and getting good marks, the exams were getting very well. And we thought this man is a genius, this lawyer. And we didn't know that Shimataji <laughs> was helping our Agni Chakra. <laughs> we had no idea, but this became a ritual. You used to enjoy that. So when I joined Sahaj, one day the Sajogis told me, let me show you something really nice, you know. And as we were going to that direction, I said, oh, I know what it is, is that photo on the sh window shop, that's the photo of Sri Mataji, isn't it? Yes, that's the first time I realized that was the photo of Sri Mataji. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I had been looking at for, I don't know how long, maybe two years. Wow. You know, before joining Sahaj. And you didn't know who, who she was? No, no idea, no idea. But uh, the exams were going very well. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went to the first public programming in Lisbon, yes, right? Yes, in Lisbon, yes. Um, how did that happen? My parents actually went the day before. And um, they arrived home very late, I was asleep. Mm -hmm. Around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., they knocked on my door and they showed me the photograph of Shimataji and they said, this is what you need. And I got afraid because, oh my God, I knew that my mom goes to these uh, witches and uh, spiritualisms and tarot ladies and uh, psychic ladies. So I got afraid. As I said, no, no, no. I'll be afraid of ghosts during the night. I can't sleep, you know. Take it away, please. But my mom, she doesn't take orders from me. She put the photo there on the shelves. I didn't know that. In fact, I slept like a log. It was the best sleep of my life. 
no fear of ghosts, nothing, absolute peace and bliss. And for the first time, Christ appeared in my dream. And this mm. is something extraordinary for me because I've been praying for the Holy Ghost to come to me or to meet Christ for so long. Since coming across William Blake, mm -hmm. I had felt uh, that my seeking must improve, you know, and now my prayers were to meet Christ, really, and to get some connection or, or the Holy Ghost as well. But nothing was happening. I never dreamt with Christ. And now, for the first time, Christ appears in my dream. Of course, I didn't see Christ, just His voice. Mm -hmm. I knew this is the voice of Christ because this was a voice like like a primordial sound, like the Om, the deep resounding voice. And uh, he was quoting, the words were the quotes, the words of Christ. I knew them from reading in the Bible. I read the Bible in Portuguese, so mm -hmm. it's hard for me to translate now to English after so many years, because I've been here in England for more than 40 years. But what I remember, the words were, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I had no clothes and you gave me no clothes. I was ill, you never came to visit me. I was in jail, you never visited me either, you know. And this repeated itself throughout the whole dream. Those words of Christ were always re reverberating very loud, very deep. I could not get those words out of my mind. When I woke up, I could hardly speak because those words were still playing inside my head, the memory of it. And by now I was getting a bit worried, this must have some meaning. I know these are the words of Christ from the Gospel. I know this is the voice of Christ, my intuition tells me. Mm -hmm. And I haven't got a clue what this means, what, what do I have to do? What's the meaning of all this, you know? I get the message at last from Christ, but uh, I don't know what it means, you know? And uh, I was just waiting, meanwhile lunchtime is approaching. And suddenly, something strange happens, you know. I had a girlfriend in those days, and uh, we didn't get on well. We argued a lot and fought a lot. She was a communist. I was uh, a bit fanatic, Bible type of a person, plus the seeking and God. It's impossible for me to convert to communism because there's no God in communism. Mm. So arguments are very big, you know, and we didn't get on well. But that day she rang my parents to say she had forgiven, forgiven them and she was going to come for lunch. So they arranged for her to come that day for lunch. I was not even interested because uh, the only problem in my mind is what is the meaning of these words? I'm not interested even. I just mm -hmm. want to know the meaning of these so words. So these words they were repeating in your head all oh, the time? Oh, constantly that sound. Okay. It was like a magical mantra. It was going on and on. And I can't understand. There's no way I can understand this, you know. Then suddenly I got the enlightenment at last. I know what this means because part of me was saying, I never did those things to Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is not, uh, nothing to do with me, but it must be. Then I realized, oh my God, I refused to go and see my cousin in jail. My cousin had been in jail for two years because of some drug, or serious drug offenses. And not only I refused to go there, but I told my parents they ought not to go. One should not support crime or compromise with crime or wrongdoing and uh, mix with criminals. Nothing. After all, you would become a lawyer. Yes, I was studying the law and crime is something very serious. You don't compromise, you don't uh, sympathize, you have nothing to do with it, you know. You know, like a Bible type of uh, fanatic, you know. <laughs> So my father asked me, what happened to you? Suddenly you had an epiphany or what? I said, yes, I had. I have to go to jail to go and see my cousin now. So my father said, today is your good luck day after all, because we are going. In fact, we go every, every Saturday we go. Mm -hmm. So you better come with us. But the problem is you can't come because your girlfriend is coming. And she already does thinks we are bad people here because we are reactionaries or we don't <laughs> believe in communism or socialism. And on top, if you take her to jail now to see our family and there's a guy in jail there, for, you know, this is a disaster, she'll never speak to us again. I don't care. These are like orders from God. I have to go to jail today. Mm -hmm. And so I went, you know, and she came along as well. She had mm -hmm. to come. She came for lunch and then we all went to jail to see my cousin, you know. And on the way there, suddenly, 
my aunt because I I went to, in in my aunt's car. My parents were in their car. Mm-hmm. My aunt in a car with her husband, and my aunt said, you know, after going to jail and seeing my son, we are going to go and see this lady Mataji. You know, a great great master of yoga, the top expert. As soon as you meet her, your heart will open. You feel a love you've never ever felt. And I said, oh my God. I wish my parents had told me about this lady. I thought it was a tarot reader or something. <laughs> this is a master of yoga, and you feel those things the way my aunt described Sri Mataji. I mean, I have to go and see her. The problem is my girlfriend, because she's 80, she may refuse to go. Mm-hmm. And then what do I do with her? I have to take her home instead, you know. So I decided she has to come. Enough nonsense. She just has to come, because I'm not going to miss this at mm-hmm. any cost. And just before we went, negativity came up, she refused to go. Now she's not coming. We had to go up the steps, she's refusing to go. And I kind of dragged her a little bit. She was very, very thin, you know, not, not, it's not hard for me to drag her. She's very thin, I just pushed her up and took her up, you know. And there we went to see Sri Mataji, you know. So, if Mother's photo hadn't come into my room that night, I would Mm -hmm. not have the, the dream of Christ. Yeah. And Christ told me to go to jail, basically. And because I went to jail, I heard about Shimataji and decided to go mm-hmm. to jail. It was important that this girl also comes, this girlfriend comes to see Shimataji. That was part of the Maya. It was necessary for my, for my liberation, so mm-hmm. to say. And what is more, that day when I was talking to Shimataji there at the program, Shimataji told me, Something very important, you have to go to jail and see your cousin. Shimataji told me that during that <laughs> meeting. I said, but I've been, you know, I was so proud of myself. I've been to jail to see him today. I said to Shimataji, really good. So now I'll go back there again and raise this Kundalini. Shimataji told me, your oh, aunt asked me to give him realization remotely, you know, since he cannot come to see Shimataji because she wants him to be saved because the drugs is such a problem. Mm-hmm. So, I made some exception. I gave him realization here, from distance, you know. So, all you have to go do now is go and work on him and raise his Kundalini. I've done all the work. That's all you have to do. So, Shrimataj gave him a realization or, or you could give him self-realization just by... No, Shrimataj, Shri oh, right. at the request of my aunt, okay. gave him realization at distance. Okay. But then she told me, since it's your family, you go now and see him in jail. And raise his Kundalini, that's all you have to do, because mm-hmm. I already gave him realization. So I was so proud, I was able to tell Shrimataji, I, I, I used to refuse to see him, you know, in jail. But, you know, I told with such pride, I already went to see him in jail today, you know. <laughs> you know, that was such a miracle, you know. And thanks to all this nonsense of the jail, you know, I ended up going to see Shrimataji, otherwise I would have missed it, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well... That was a surprising development, isn't it? And then it? you went there to jail and worked on him. Yeah. No, I never went to jail. Oh, really? <laughs> Time passes, you know. Okay, so you forgot and you didn't No, I go. didn't forget, you know. We're busy, I'm joining Sahaj, it's my first month in Sahaj. Then we have a new president, and the president gave an amnesty for criminals. Uh, but in this case, he did not qualify. But my aunt decided to ask the lawyer to apply for his uh, release under the amnesty. Mm-hmm. Because the lawyer said, you know, there are so many applications, sometimes they do mistakes and people don't qualify to get released. Mm-hmm. And she was a lucky one, she the miracle of mother. He did not qualify for the terms of the amnesty because of some serious things he had done, but somehow they made a mistake, he was released. So he came to my home. <laughs> And that's when we worked on him, three such yogis, and raised this Kundalini. Amazing. And as Mother said, it was an incredible experience. Raising his Kundalini, Mother really had done a phenomenal job. It was a sea of vibrations, like an ocean of vibrations. Mm-hmm. It was an incredible experience raising his Kundalini. So Mother not only gave him realization, I didn't have to go to jail to give him realization to <laughs> raise his Kundalini there. He came to my home. And he got released. It's a miracle. Amazing. He didn't qualify under the terms of the amnesty, but my aunt applied, her mm-hmm. lawyer applied. And somehow, by mistake, or God knows what, or miracle, he got released. He came out. So I didn't have time even to go to jail. He came to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
so not tell that, that story that you had to go to the house where Shimati was staying. You had a meeting with Shimati at four o'clock in the morning. Yes, <laughs> when I arrived there, they told us I went to my father, my mom, my sister. We all went to jail, and my aunt and her husband. So we went to jail. Then we came to Sister Mataji and this girlfriend of mine, you know. And we were sitting there in a little room, which is a room you have to go down the stairs, an ancient place. And you're sitting there very quiet. They said Sri Mataji is uh, having a siesta when she, she needs to rest because she gets up very early to, and she meditates in the morning and then she rests mm -hmm. a bit in the she rests in the afternoon, you know. And uh, we we're waiting for her, you know, for quite a while. You know, I was getting bored. You know, I see two boys passing through. I knew them from the false gurus. So oh, I'm going to have a word with them. These people are, are in this organization, you know. And I know them from the past, from these false mm -hmm. gurus. I went after them and said, hey, stop, stop, don't you remember me? I'm Louis, you know, from this false guru, this, that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, 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 we've never met you in our lives. Never, never. Stop, don't talk of this. And I said, goodness me, these people are mad. Now they don't know me. After all these years, you know. So I went after them to see if they were going to their rooms. Mm -hmm. I thought, so I went after them, you know, to see what, where they go to their rooms. So I would knock on their doors and say, come on, don't you remember me? What yeah. are you doing? But instead, Sri Mataji came from a room. She finished the siesta. Mm -hmm. And as I saw Sri Mataji come from the room, from the photo, because now I had seen that my mom gave me a photo. I know this is a lady Mataji, you know. And so I'm looking at her from a distance in the corridor. And uh, while I was looking at her, something strange happened. Suddenly, I saw all my past lives. And in all my past lives, there was a, a kind of a lady, like a goddess, looking from above in a cloud, and she was seeing each of my previous lives and helping me, guiding me, avoiding problems, taking me in the but right was path. Was it a vision that you had? It's or? a vision, so this, okay. this takes about three seconds, and then next previous life the same, you know, and next previous life, and next one. In a matter of seconds, I saw all, lots, lots, lots of my previous lives, and being guided and helped, by this uh, lady, like a goddess in the air, or like a great angel, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lady in that cloud looked like Sri Mataji, in fact, the lady in the mm -hmm. photograph. Mm -hmm. So I said, this is something absolutely extraordinary, you know. I never knew I was coming to meet someone so great, you know. I got afraid, I got afraid. but to tell you the truth, I got afraid. This is too much, this is too great, you see. So I went back to that little room where we were waiting for Sri Mataji to tell my parents, I'm not ready, I need to go home, I need to have a good bath, purify myself, do some proper fasting, stop eating meat, no sins, no nothing, read the Bible. Just one question, this was in an ashram or, or what's this uh, place? They had rented a, an ancient property oh, for see. mother to stay and okay. also the Saj Yogis and to do follow-ups for the meetings, you know, so... Oh, I see. That was the the idea. You see. Mm -hmm. Some of the follow-ups for people who had already matched Mataji, not for completely new people. People who had already mm -hmm. matched Mataji in public programs, they could come there to see Mother again or to see the Saj Yogis. Mm -hmm. Saj Yogis mm -hmm. were sleeping there, Mother was also staying there. And so this was the place, very, very big place. Mm -hmm. and, and then when you, you saw, the, the, had that vision of the past, oh, life, I you were completely scared. Yes, I was afraid. I knew this is too great, much greater than I thought, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went back to tell my parents that, you know, I need to be ready before I meet this lady, you know. I need to purify, to stop no sins, no mistakes, no eating of meat. I, th I used to think that was a serious thing, you know, but I used to eat it. So <laughs> this, now I have to prepare myself and I'll come back maybe two months later when I'm purified. I didn't realize Sri Mataji doesn't live in Portugal, so I thought I can come back later. I didn't realize that, mm. you know, next day Sri Mataji was going back to England. I had no idea, you see. So as I said a few words to my parents, suddenly I looked behind and Sri Mataji is there by the door. It's a very small room and Sri Mataji is by the door and being a very ancient room, the door is like a, an arse, you know, mm -hmm. shape of a bandan. And Sri Mataji is, is exactly the shape and size of that door. So there's no, I can't run away. Mother is blocking <laughs> the way, you know. And she sees me and she says, sit down. So I sat down and she asked me, what's that woman doing there? Pointing at my girlfriend. 
And so it, I couldn't give an answer, you know. My mother asked me, what is, who is that woman? What is she doing there? That's my girlfriend. But wow. I lost my... I couldn't find the word. I wanted to say, I want to say, this is my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But the word disappeared from my brain. Completely. Mm -hmm. It was like a blank and I was amazed. I can't even remember the word now. So two, two people came to help to translate. This was Saj Yogis, Maria Amelia, and one of the Saj Yogis to help translate. The mother said, doesn't matter, he, is, he can't translate, no need. After a long time, I remember the word, oh, yes, girlfriend, you know, mother, uh, Sri Mataji. Mm -hmm. I didn't used to call her mother. You know, Sri Mataji, this uh, lady Mataji used to say, uh, this is my girlfriend, you know. And Sri Mataji said, no, I don't. I actually don't know that word. That word does not exist, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that explains wow. why I can't remember the word, you know. <laughs> And besides, you know, do you love her? She might as you ask me. Eh? And that's the second strange thing happened to my brain for the first time. I, I did not love her at all because we fought all the time. I wanted to stop that relationship. In any case, I've been trying, but uh, I just couldn't answer the question. Instead of lying, because I had been trained with all these exams and oral exams to say anything and uh, give any answer, you know, that was the training. It's not about saying the truth, it's about arguing a point of view, any point of view. Mm -hmm. Easiest would have been to say, of course I like her, otherwise I'll not be his boyfriend, isn't it, you know. <laughs> but nothing, I just could not lie. So mother asked me three times, you know, do you love her? In the end, I confessed the truth, no, I don't, at all. I was saying, but this is... Very gross and indecent, you know. If you don't even love her, what are you doing with this woman, you know? Mm -hmm. And she couldn't understand anything, right? But this girlfriend didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> he said, so this is very gross, very indecent. You don't even love this girl, what are you doing? Either marry or leave her, leave her in peace and they don't treat her like that, you know? And that was it. That was for starters, you see. Because, and it was wonderful because this is what I wanted to do in any case. Freedom. And, yes. <laughs> From that woman, you know. I'll tell you more about that woman <laughs> later, if there's time. So, then Shibataji wanted to work on some of the people that were there also waiting for her, who had met her before at public programs. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, I can translate. So, I mean, that was an amazing experience because I was now sitting next to mother, and mother was about this distance. And I could feel such an incredible energy coming out of this lady, Mataji, you know, something enormous, blissful, the fragrance, it was paradise, just being next to her, I knew there's a difference, a distance, maybe a foot, I cannot go any closer to her, because it's pure energy, I could feel that, mentally, I didn't understand anything, I just could feel that, what a privilege to be even this close to this lady, and I said, thank you, Mr. William Blake, because it's thanks to Mr. William Blake, that I decided to study English because I wanted to be able to read mm -hmm. his writings. So I had to study for two years. It wasn't enough. My English wasn't still good enough for Blake, but I could read a little bit. But uh, thanks to him, I could translate for Sri Mataji you now and talk to her. And I said, thank you, Mr. William Blake. Thanks to you, <laughs> I decided to learn English. And now I can be this near to this lady, which is... It was like an energy of bliss coming from her and the fragrance. It was divine, you know. It was a great experience. This is before mother gave me realization. Mm -hmm. So I started translating for mother. And mother started working on a lady and she told me, tell this lady to say the mantra in, you know, translate for her, to, for her to say in Portuguese that I am my own guru 10 times. And I translated, I am not my own guru. <laughs> I told her to say, I'm not my own guru 10 times. And so the lady started saying the mantras, I am, I am not my own guru, I am not my own guru. You know? <laughs> and uh, Sri Mataji looks at me, the vibrations are horrible. What, <laughs> what on earth did you tell her to say? I told her to say the mantra, I am not my own guru. <laughs> yes, I understand, but uh, in Sahaja Yoga it's different, you see. In all those gurus out there, that is correct. But here in Sahaj, you actually become your own guru. It's unique of Sahaj, only in Sahaj. Mm -hmm. As you get realization and deepen into it, you become your own guru. So it is the truth in Sahaja Yoga. All right, so, so now tell the lady to say the mantra 20 times. I am my own guru. So <laughs> then the vibration started flowing. 
then uh, mother still working on the lady, Trish da Vishudi, and mother tells me, tell the lady to say, in Portuguese of course, the mantra, I am not guilty at all, 16 times. And I translated, I am guilty, <laughs> 16 times. And again, Shimataji felt vibrations are appalling. Why? What are you doing? What have you said to this lady? I told her to say the mantra, I am guilty, 16 times. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes, I understand, you see. Yes, you are Catholic, isn't it? Yes, everybody's Catholic here, but uh, in Sahaja Yoga, it's the other way around. Sahaja mm -hmm. Yoga cleanses you completely of all your sins and all your guilt and gives you self-realization by which all the guilt is gone. So I'm giving a realization now. I'm going to remove all the guilt from her. She's not guilty of anything. She can say the mantra, I am not guilty now. So then I gave the correct translation. <laughs> And that's when I realized something has happened to my brain. Mm -hmm. I don't manage to lie anymore. You see, I wasn't able to lie to mother saying, I love that girl, I didn't. I wasn't able to say the mantra that I thought was false. I couldn't say it, you know. Mm. As it turned up, the mantra was true. So, <laughs> but my brain could no longer lie. I could see this is a, something strange happening in my so brain. So you suddenly realized that you wouldn't have a future as a lawyer in No, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a sign that something is happening, isn't it? Yeah. At this absolutely. point, mother is not yet giving me realization officially yet. So you haven't got your self realization. You're just being a translator there in the yes. Room. Okay. And uh, meeting mother for the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. <laughs> and then you have an appointment, right, with Shumatij? Oh yes. Then actually, actually, in the end, mother gave me realization. You know, in that same evening, in that yeah. same evening, mother made a little talk, and then she gave me realization. You know, there was a cue. Mother used to give realization to people also individually. Uh. You know, as well as giving it on mass. She also then worked on people. There was a cue, and the first person on the cue was me because I was very anxious. You know, <laughs> and my girlfriend came with me, and mother says to me, "Sir," and she called me "Sir." This is not good news. Sir, go back to the end of the queue, to me. Oh my but God. the girlfriend stayed there, and mm. she worked on her. So, I was not in the queue, but I came to listen, because I wanted to hear what's going on. I used to be like a spy, so I was <laughs> out of the queue. Because she's working on my girlfriend, I have to be there to hear what's going on. Such yogis were translating for mother. Mm -hmm. And the mother asked so many questions to her, in, in, in English, but they translated, you know. And then it turned out she couldn't have children, you see. Mm -hmm. She had great, great pains in this area. That I knew, we didn't know what it was. We thought it was a, a very bad stomach, but she, was, she had complications, very serious complications. So mother worked on her for a long time, you know. And in the end she said, I think now she may be able to conceive, you know, because mother mm -hmm. worked on her for a long time. She said, I think I fixed her. She'll be able to conceive, you know. Uh, the queues were not very big, the queues were four or five people, so meanwhile, after a while, my turn came up again, four or five people, and mother looks at me and says, sir, go back to the end of the queue again. <sighs> so I went back to the end of the queue, another four people came, you know, and then my turn came up again and again. Every time my turn came up, you know, mm -hmm. mother always said, sir, go back to the end of the queue. Oh my so yeah, I go back to the end of the queue again. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's going on, but it's getting very late in the night. And I'm worried I'm going to miss my chance. I'm trying. I'm not good at queuing, you see. I like to jump the queues as much as possible. But it's a habit. I have a habit of jumping queues, you know. <laughs> and the habit was there. I couldn't control it. And then, sir, go back to the end of the queue. You know? oh. I was the last person mother worked on. I was worried it's getting so late I may miss my chance, you know. Mother may send me, sir, go back home now. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> but mother worked on me. For a long, long time, you know. That was uh, surprising. Mother worked on me for so long. And it was an amazing experience to have mother work on you for so long, you know. I was a bit hard of hearing in those days. And she said lots of mantras inside my ear in this ear. Mm -hmm. Then she said lots of mantras in the other ear as well to improve my, my hearing, you know. At one time she said, uh, you can take off your glasses now if you want, you know, you don't need them, you know. And I was amazed I took off my glasses, I don't need them, you see. 
So I discarded them. Let's see. <laughs> this is amazing, you know. And then during the process, you know, she, she used to do a kind of a neck crick, you know, boom, <laughs> twist the head to one side, mm -hmm. and the noise, the spine makes a big noise. Oh and she turned my head that side, that way, you know, this is. Uh, you may, may have seen mother doing that on video I think sometimes. I have, yeah, I have seen it. And I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know what it was. But when she <laughs> twisted my head to one side, boom, it must have blocked some blocks in the Vishuddha. It was like, oh my God, as if I was felt like a new person. What the clearing out. And suddenly, all of a sudden, boom, and then the head had another neck click in the opposite direction. You know. I'm here. I should have been afraid of all this, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. Even if she breaks my spine, it's such bliss. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know, let her break my neck. I don't care. I, said, I used to be very afraid, though, you know, but suddenly, let her break my neck. I don't care. It's so blissful, <laughs> so extraordinary. It's the deepest experience I've ever had, you know. And then she goes to handbag. And she takes something, I didn't know what it was. And it was a thing they call Netranjan. I don't know how to, to read. This is an Indian medicine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is made of, it's like a kajal, but with lots of camphor in it, very strong, you know. And you put that in the eyes, you cannot see. The tears start coming from your eyes, you think you are blind. Mm -hmm. So without telling me, Shmata, she takes a wallop of that kajal and puts it inside my eyes. You know? <laughs> That's it, I'm blind in one eye, but... <laughs> <laughs> But who cares? I feel terrific. I don't even need the glasses, so I don't need the glasses. I can see it's only one eye, that's matter. Because this is blissful. No it was spine, the, no eye, the, 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 the greatest experience of my life. And then she takes another wall up and puts on the other eyes. That was the best. Now it's both eyes, you know. Now it's boom, I'm totally blind. And I love it. This is fantastic. Because the life in the inside is much greater, the joy, than what you see outside. This is divine, mm. really divine. After a while, the eyes stop watering and you can see again. So <laughs> I did not become blind. But it was an incredible experience. Mother worked on me for 45 minutes or thereabouts. Wow. And now I understand why I had to be the last. Because uh, it takes so long. It's not fair on the other people to wait so long for, for mother to look after this. So the guy there said, oh, your glasses, you forgot your glasses. I don't want them. Keep them. <laughs> Leave them behind. You know, Amazing. I went home without the glasses. I don't need them. It was an interesting experience. Actually, it reminds me a little story in the Bible. I think that I don't know exactly if it's the right saying is like the last ones will be the first. Yes. There's yes. this. Uh, That's an interesting saying. Yes. Yeah. The, the first shall be the last. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A very important saying, yes. So then, she, and then you had to meet Shimataji the next day, or how well, that worked? Well, as we were, we were about to say goodbye to Shimataji because I was one of the, the last person, really, she worked on. Many people had already left. Mm -hmm. He was saying goodbye to Shimataji. And Shimataji said to me, if you want to see me tomorrow, come and see me morning but not late, you know, come early, or you might miss me because I have to take a, uh, a flight to Spain, you see. So if you come too late, you won't meet, you won't see me, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, fine. I'm so delighted. I was so honored with that invitation, you know. Uh, I said, I don't. Even my mind said, I don't want to come too early and disturb her. She may be resting, you know. It's already so late. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come too late and miss her. I need to know exactly when to come. You see. So I asked her, what time exactly should I come? Oh, no, no, nothing like this. Just come, you know, come early. It'll be fine, you know. Uh, make sure you don't miss me before I go to the flight, you know. Yes, but um, it's a bit vague, you know. I would love to have a time, an exact time I can come. But I said, no, no, I've just told you, you don't need an exact time. Just come, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, so I was worried, you know. If I come too early, I wake her up. You know, if I come too late, I miss her. Mm. I needed a time, you know. And the dilemma there. So I asked her, I thought, I have a solution. I, I'm going to ask what time she, does, she gets up. Because if I know what time she gets up, <laughs> then I come after she gets up. That way mm -hmm. I don't disturb her or wake her up. So I asked Shimataji, you know, what time do you get up? She says, 4 a.m. <laughs> 4 a.m.? <laughs> it's almost 4 a.m. <laughs> so late. It was at least 2 a.m. by then. Oh this was God. getting late, you know. It was almost 2 a.m. by then. It was getting really late, you know. Yes, I always get up at 4 a.m. 
Really? Oh, yes. I got up at 4 a.m., she said, and I do meditation. I can't sleep at 4 a.m. I have to meditate. Right, so when shall I come? After 4 a.m.? Mm. Yes, good idea. <laughs> you, are, you are most welcome. Why not? Come anytime you want. 4 a.m. is perfect if you want. So I thought, this is it. I mean, mother gave me an appointment to see her at 4 a.m., I thought. Mm -hmm. I went home, just had time to have a quick shower, I changed into a nice suit, you know. And I went, got on my motorbike, and here I come. It's but did you sleep that night? Or? No, I just went home, got okay. late, <laughs> had, had the shower, and here I go. You know, because I have an appointment yeah, with mother yeah, at 4 a.m., you know. I got on my motorbike, I'm going to drive fast, I'll be there on time, you know. Mm -hmm. I started uh, driving on my motorbike, and boom, no petrol, that's it. But then I realized I don't even have any money. I forgot my wallet to eat the rush. I didn't sleep, you see. You don't sleep to have this. It's gone. I got my realization. I didn't sleep. I'm rushing for an appointment to see mother at 4 a.m. I forgot my wallet. And the motorbike ran out of petrol. And I don't want to be late. I used to have a problem. I was very ill. And I had to walk very, very slowly. So slowly like an old man. And rest. And walk. And rest. And walk. But this is like a miracle. I decided to run, you know, with my helmet on the hand. I ran all the way to the appointment. It's a long distance, you know. My mother was staying next to the a church of the Se, which is the main cathedral in mm -hmm. Lisbon. And I ran out of petrol at the statue of the Marquise de Pombal. Mm -hmm. That's where I ran out of petrol. So I ran all the way from the statue of Marquise de Pombal mm -hmm. to the, the Se Cathedral, because mother was staying next door there. As if I'm a hero, as if I'm an athlete, you know, I, I, I couldn't even walk, you know. I run all the way down the hill and up the hill, it's such an uphill yeah. thing, I never stopped. I arrived there and, oh my God, it's 5 a.m. My goal was to reach at 4 a.m., you know, or thereabouts. 5 a.m., I ring, I bang on the door, nobody answers, you know. I bang on the door, nobody answers. I cannot miss this meeting with Shamataji, you know. I bang on the door and at last, you know. A lady comes in her pyjamas, you know, opens the door. I said, oh my God, you are not even dressed yet. Who's Maria Mel? <laughs> At 5 a.m. That poor lady was Maria Mel, he said. He said, who are you? It's me, Luis, you know. I have an appointment to meet Sri Mataji. I was aiming for 4 a.m. 4 a.m., I'm late. I'm so sorry. I mean, I run, run, run. She said, what happened to your suit? You are soaking wet, all your tie, your shirt, your suit, dripping in sweat, with a helmet in the hand, you know, what happened to you? Oh, I ran out of petrol, so I ran. Oh my God, you know. You better slow down and calm down, you know. All right, come in. Oh, these people, they ring just any time or what, you know. Come at, they come at this hour. I have an appointment to see Sri Mataji at 5 a.m. Yes, mm -hmm. of course you do, of course you do, don't <laughs> worry, we're not going to argue about that. <laughs> Just sit down and meditate, and Shimataji will be with you presently, you know. You just meditate and, and all will be fine. And I said, no one told me how to meditate in this technique, you know. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you just meditate, you know, nothing complicated. Sit down, look at the photo of, of the lady there on the mantelpiece, and that's it. You go into meditation, it's that simple. Ah, my God, you know, just how stupid do you think I am? <laughs> I've been going to lots of gurus and reading lots of things. Meditation is not just like that. But did you, you tell know? her that? No. Sorry? Did you tell her or you just thought? No, I told her, you know. <laughs> I used to argue a lot, you know. We were, we were being taught to argue every, all the time. You had to. So we argued and argued and argued. He said, all right, she lost the patience at last, getting her up in the middle of the night. She's not even dressed. And now she has to teach me the technique of meditation. I'm really a difficult client, you know. And she said, look, just do it, you know. And if it doesn't work, then you can complain, all right? And I'm going, I have, I'm busy, you know. And she went. I tried that meditation. And my goodness, did it work. She came back an hour later to see if I was in one piece, if I was behaving myself. <laughs> ah, so, did that work? Oh my God, did that work? What an amazing meditation. Of course, Shimataji is in the, in the room next door. Mm. That must have helped, you see. <laughs> so I said, um, okay, I'm going to cook a, a breakfast for the lady, Mataji. She yeah. said, I understand, I understand. You want to have your breakfast, isn't it? You run a lot, you've been running. <laughs> said, no, no, no. 
I want to cook a breakfast for that lady, she said. All right. And you were a good cook at that time? Or? No. <laughs> not a great cook. I used to cook for my cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That I did, but other than that, you know. <laughs> so I said, all right, feel free to have a nice breakfast. Go to the kitchen, help yourself, eat anything you want. It's all yours. You are most welcome. Mm -hmm. You don't need to cook a breakfast for the lady. Cook a nice big breakfast for yourself and have it. You've been running a lot, I can see. You need a big <laughs> breakfast. I don't want a breakfast. I'm going to cook for this lady. So I did. I was a bit of a, a hard case, always arguing. <laughs> <laughs> and I cooked a big breakfast for Shimataji, you know. Eggs, sausages, bacon, I raided the whole kitchen, everything that was there, bread, fried bread, you name it, orange juice, coffee, tea, the whole thing on a big tray, you know. And then she came, so, uh, why don't you eat it? Oh, it's not for me, it's for the lady, Mataji. <laughs> oh my God, surely it's half a pay for breakfast, you know, <laughs> at most, you know. Really? Is that what you give her for breakfast? Yes, that's what I give her for breakfast. She doesn't need more than that. Have you ever given her a proper breakfast? You know, no. As I told. And so it was a Portuguese breakfast that yes, you did. Yes, like a big proper Portuguese okay. breakfast. You know, <laughs> no, actually not. Just half a pay. All right, give it to her. I said, I told her, but she doesn't eat these things. You know, I will at least show it to her. Okay, fine. No more arguments. I'll show the. <laughs> I'll show the breakfast, <laughs> just for a laugh, you know. And she went to the room, showed her the breakfast, closed the door. Half an hour later, she comes back with the tray empty. Her eyes were coming out her eyes. She oh, yeah. ate the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't believe it. And now she wants to speak to you. Okay, this is, now something is happening. You know? <laughs> so I went into the room. She told me to sit down, you know. And she was sitting down also. She said, can you feel the vibrations now? And she blew the breeze of the Holy Ghost to me from a distance of two meters, you know. She blew it. And my God, what a deep, wow. deep, incredible bliss experience and coolness all over myself. You know, this is unbelievable. So, can you feel the vibrations? I said, no. <laughs> I still couldn't lie, you see. I was still in that mood. <laughs> For me, the word vibrations means something is vibrating and shaking and mm -hmm. moving. Physical and nothing was vibration. moving in the room. I wasn't moving. I wasn't shaking. The room wasn't shaking. It's, this is not vibrating. Mm -hmm. So I said no. So mother blew the cool breeze again in my direction. You know. And my God, I like this, you know. This is incredible. <laughs> I could have more of this. So mother said, so now you can feel the vibrations. Isn't it? I said no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll try. We'll try. We'll try one more time. <laughs> and what does it again? A third time, and oh my God! I didn't even want to open my eyes. I was lost in it. This was extraordinary. You see, then Shimata just said, "You can open your eyes, mm -hmm. you know." So now, can you feel the vibrations? And I said, "No." The same. It's not vibrating. I cannot lie. You see. At this time, Maria Emily lost her patience. Oh, come on, for God's sake, why do you behave like this to this lady? You know? And she said, it's all right, it's all right. This is a problem in translation. Um, and then I said, yes, I agree with that. It's not vibrating, so it's not vibrations. Mm -hmm. One said, well, in Sahaja Yoga, when you say vibrations, it doesn't mean the room has to shake, shake. you know, <laughs> or the person starts shaking. <laughs> it's this bliss and cool vibration that cool breeze that you felt, that, that bliss, this is what we call the cool vibrations, you know. Uh, did you feel that? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Mother was right. It was a, a problem of translation. That, that was all. And then she said something extraordinary. She said, uh, if you want to come with me in the car to mm -hmm. go to the airport, you can come, you know. You are most welcome if you can. I said, yes, I can. I'm free, you know. I can. Mm -hmm. I'll come, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I was delighted. Can yeah, you imagine driving <laughs> in the car with Shrimataji to the yeah. airport, you know? And the time was getting now ready, you know, a little bit, you know. Getting close, mother has to go to the airport. So mother went to the car. Sajiogi is right at the front, two of them. Maria Mel is there, mother is there. And there's a free space for me. So I opened the door to get inside. Mm -hmm. As I opened the door, 
a dog got inside in my place and sat there, big dog next to Shimataji, <laughs> sitting upright, very dignified, as if in meditation. This is where I wanted to go, my place. <laughs> and the dog is there, took my place. I look at mother, mother looks at me, mother told me I could go. <laughs> you know, so mother starts dragging. Try, mother tried to drag the, do the dog out of the car so the dog can stay at home. Mm -hmm. The dog doesn't have to come to the airport. Yeah, so it was yeah. my place, you know. But the dog didn't agree. He started doing the noises. And when mother puts the hand in the collar of the dog to push him out, the dog does. <laughs> <laughs> and is there on mother's hand very close, you know. But mother is not afraid. This, this is quite extraordinary. Mother is not afraid of the dog. Mm -hmm. Second time, mother pushes the dog again quite strongly, you know. And the dog goes. <laughs> 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 said, oh my God, this is not going to be easy, you know. And that mother, there's a third time she pushes the dog and <laughs> big noise. I thought, my God, she's going to lose the hand. She's not afraid, you know. And I'm you didn't good. try, no? You... I told mother, you know, <laughs> Shimataji, please, please. Uh, uh, don't do it again, please. I was feeling sick just seeing that <laughs> she's going to lose the hand there. And she said, Mother Shimata, she said to me, you know what, why don't you take the bus? Hmm. I said, great idea. <laughs> I didn't realize that I left my wallet at home. I wasn't aware of that. So then I realized, oh my God, I don't have my wallet with this rush. I was coming by motorbike. But then the car already left. Oh, mother's car went, you know. Okay. And then I realized I don't have... Uh, a wallet even, you see. But mother told me to, to go to the bus stop, to take mm -hmm. the bus, so I went to the bus stop. I don't know why. That's what know, happened. Because I didn't have money, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to beg in the streets, you know. <laughs> I was too, too well dressed for that even, with a suit and tie. Yeah, that's true. It had dried by now a bit, you know. <laughs> so, but you know what? I went to the bus stop and sat there waiting for the bus. No money, nothing, just sitting there. Absolutely, like an idiot, just sitting there. Because Sri Mataji <laughs> said so. I said, this is not me. I've only met Sri Mataji the day before. Rationally, this does not make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I waited and waited and waited. I'm still there. And time is passing, you know. I'm waiting for the bus to go to the airport to see, to see Sri Mataji. Except that I have no money, so I can't go. So what am I doing there, sitting mm -hmm. there? I just did it because Mother said so. And I, I was in a state of thoughtless awareness, you could say. That's the state I was in, and I, I was really not used to that state. I didn't understand, what is this, you know? <laughs> Why do I feel like this? And nothing, nothing bothers me. Nothing is important, you know, except going to the airport or seeing the lady again at the airport. It was a strange experience, you know, but very blissful too. And then another guy comes, and I knew these people, they were such yogis, I knew them from the false gurus in the mm. past. <laughs> they knew me too, although they denied it. The same team. <laughs> and sits next to me, and I said, fine, this is a miracle. I need to borrow the bus fare from you, mm. okay? Yes, no problem. He didn't have enough money for his own, for his own <laughs> share, for his own fare, leave alone to lend me some. And he sat there like me, we sat there, you know, relaxing, we weren't even talking much, we just said goodbye to mother, we were just sitting there. And she realized, this is really strange, you know. We just sit here on the bus stop, waiting to go to the airport, time is passing, we're not bothered. What's wrong, you know? What's, waiting for a miracle. What's this state, right? you know? He said, yes, these things happen, he said, you know. But he was very thoughtless like me, and we just sat there like two zombies, you know, but feeling in paradise. <laughs> Absolute paradise, we don't mind time of sitting at the bus stop, all the buses are coming and going and people, you are just there in bliss and in meditation, so to say. And then a third size yogi comes. You know. <laughs> I knew him well, I also knew him. And I said, can we borrow the fare for the airport? <laughs> because he was also going to go to the airport, mm -hmm. to, to the airport by bus. Mm -hmm. He looked at his wallet, he didn't have enough for his own fare even. He couldn't go oh also. God. Portuguese economy wasn't going so well know. at that time. I don't know <laughs> what's wrong with us. We have now three zombies without the money for the fare sitting on a bench like idiots, you know. Oh and God. we are in paradise. <laughs> that is really odd, you know. So I said, what on earth are we doing that? I asked the most senior of them, the, 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 the top size yogi there of the two. What on earth are we doing that? He I said, we're doing nothing. We don't do anything, you know. The spirit does everything. Mother does everything. Wow. 
Yes, yes, but how do we get to the airport? We just leave it to God. This is how we do it in Sahaj. <laughs> well, just like that. Yes, you know, this is my... I just met mother the day before in the night, got realization, I didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm here, and I'm really confused with all this, you know, <laughs> and very thoughtless. I can't even think or lie or say the words. <laughs> it's like a, a new world to me. And then he spoke, okay, he explained me a proper Sahaj technique. And Sahaj, you know, the vibrations do everything. Mother does everything, which is too like this. And it solves all our problems. You can mm -hmm. try it, you know. Yes, man. I tried it, you know, I also did it. We all did the bandan. Mm -hmm. We sat there, and I don't know. I can't even measure time in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how long more you stood there after doing all this. <laughs> It was just like in a state I thought, oh my God, what on earth is going on here? And then suddenly, the most senior yogi of the two gets up, walks into the traffic, in the three lane, two or three lanes, he walks, you know, with courage into the traffic, stops a taxi, and that's it, let's go. This is a friend of my friend. See, what a miracle. So we all got in the taxi, you know. Amazing. We stopped the traffic virtually, because mm -hmm. now we had our taxi. <laughs> to go to... Someone decided to take action at least. <laughs> I'm sorry? Someone decided to take action there. Yeah, it's, it's a miracle. You <laughs> see. This is a friend of a friend of his. No yeah. problem. Okay. Problem solved. Halfway through the journey, in talking to him, he realized that this was not a friend of his friend. This was someone a look-alike. Oh my God. So, <laughs> we have a big problem again, isn't it? We can't pay the taxi fare. That's even worse. Before we couldn't pay the bus, now we can't pay the taxi. And if we don't pay the taxi fare in Portugal, they have a big stick under the seat. <laughs> and you know, I know, I, I, I knew what was going to happen. One of us for sure will die here today. <laughs> and I knew it was going to be me, because I had already run so much. <laughs> it's going to be difficult to run away from this situation. So I said, when the taxi stops, we all run in three directions. I'll, I'll probably die, but you might escape at least, because I already run too much. You know, what else can we do? I mm. said, oh no, 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 nothing like that, the great yogi says. <laughs> In Sahaj, that's not how we do things, we just give it a bandana. It's because the driver listened to you talking about this thing, surrendering and no money. You know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we understood what was going on. We were in a different dimension, you know. It's, uh, it's a crazy world to go in, you know. It just says, no, in Sahaj, all we do, we give a bandan, and that's it. God does the rest, Mother does the rest. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about things. So you don't want to run away. No, no, there's no need. All is well. And ultimately, the taxi... But I knew I was going to die for sure, but I was in bliss again. <laughs> This is the thing I found the most strange. I used to be so afraid of ghosts, afraid of dying, afraid of everything. Now I know for sure I'm going to die and I can't be bothered because I'm feeling terrific, you know. <laughs> and I knew some part of my brain was telling me, this is something special, you know. This state of bliss and peace, all the worries are gone. The fear, the fear of death is disappearing. That's quite an, an amazing state to be. That's what I felt at the time. And that ultimately the taxi reached the direction, mm -hmm. reached the destination, and uh, it parked next door to Sri Mataji's car at the same time, the two cars wow. next to each other. So Amazing. one of the Sahaja Yogis at last inside the car with mother paid for our taxi. Our problems are over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then that was it. And then you went to talk to Sri at the yes, airport? Yes, then yeah. I went to talk to Sri Mataji, Sri Mataji went to Spain, you know. Mm -hmm. And I decided to spend the night at the ashram, and I decided to stay there in the ashram forever. I decided. So you moved in there to Moved in, you know. Yeah. I'm staying here forever now, because there was space, I could stay there, sleeping mm -hmm. on the floor, and I stayed there, you know, for four or five days, you know. And then, uh, suddenly we got to get the news, we got the phone call from Maria Amelia saying, Shimataji decided to go back to Lisbon again. She mm. changed the plans. Instead okay. of going to London, to her home, she wants to go back to, to Lisbon. Portugal again, mm -hmm. to Lisbon to meet this guy called Luis, that's me. She wants to meet me because oh, wow. she got the news that as I stayed immediately living in the ashram, I was learning everything about Sahaj, mm -hmm. you know. I was uh, interested, you see. So mother said for that reason she decided to come. 
when I went to see Madre at the airport, when she arrived again from Spain, mm -hmm. she said, I, I changed my plans. I came all the way just to see one more time before going to, to London. I'll stay here now three or four days with you because uh, I travel all over the world to meet seekers. And since you are a, a person who is uh, seeking, you know, interested, I came back. So the plans have to change now. We have to again call all the new people immediately because you knew the details of some of the new people that they must come again. Mad is back. Mad mm -hmm. is back. She went away, but she's back. So more people are coming again to see mother. My parents came again. Mm -hmm. She said, my parents came again to see mother again because we gave the news. All the people who saw mother before came again. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, I was feeling a, a pain here in the left side of the forehead, very strong. This is a pain I always used to have in the forehead for many years. You know, I was doing that six year law course and that pain was there nagging me all the, all the time. Mm -hmm. So I told Shri before she went to do, to do the meeting. Uh, could you please uh, remove this pain from me? And she passed the finger very lightly, the agony finger, on my forehead, like wiping my forehead, and the whole thing went away. I was so, so excited after six years without that pain, I thought, this is amazing, you know. Wow. I went to see the other side yogis in the kitchen, and we started talking and deciding things and discussing. Suddenly, we started an argument again, and the pain comes back. So I rushed back to see Sri Mataji again because she was about to start the, the meeting. And I said, it doesn't, it, it's not working. The pain came back, you know. Have you got a stronger te Sahaj technique, you know? Because <laughs> those four or five days I had been there learning Sahaj techniques mm -hmm. with these Sahaj yogis. You know? I needed a stronger Sahaj technique, the strongest possible, because this <laughs> came back, you know. And Mata said, yes, I do have a stronger technique, but uh, you have to rub my feet, that's the strongest I have. Mm -hmm. uh, are you all right with that? Oh, yes, absolutely, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I started rubbing mother's feet. But uh, I didn't know this is an ego problem. So it's, it's quite a hard thing to remove. And I must have been rubbing mother's feet for 45 minutes in total, which is a long time. And this is delaying the start of the program. In any case, people are late, you know, people always come late. Mad is there, but she's still waiting for more people to start. She's waiting for the vibrations to settle. But I was surprised Mad doesn't start the meeting because I'm still rubbing her feet, you know, for 45 minutes or thereabouts. My parents were there already. My parents saw this and they felt this is a bit strange to see our son there on the floor rubbing her feet, you know. So my father said, all right, I think I'm going home now. My father decided. <clears throat> So he came and gave me a big tap on the shoulder and said, come on, let's go, let's get out of here. So, okay, I translated this to Sri Mataji. And Sri Mataji, I was still rubbing mother's feet. Sri Mataji said, if you want to go, you can go. But if you want to stay, you can stay. Oh, I'm free, huh? I said, this is fantastic. I used to have to obey my father <laughs> or else, or else. <laughs> I thought, what a freedom, you know, this is fantastic. So I told my father, Actually, I'm going to stay. You can go home. I'm not, I'm not staying. I'm not going home. I'll stay here. I'm sleeping here in any case. I'll stay here the night as well. Mm -hmm. So my father went away and my mom. Maybe 10 minutes later, my father is back. He comes back again. I'm still rubbing mother's feet. Mm -hmm. And he gives me another slap on the back. Come on, let's go now. You need to come and change the tire. Because I, I have a puncture, you know. This is my father, you know. Mm. He has a bad back and he needs, needs me to change the tire for him. So I translated this to Sri Mataji. Oh, he's back, my father, you know. He wants me to go. He has a puncture, he has a bad back, I have to go. Yes, you can go if you want, but you don't have to. You know, these two boys, those mm -hmm. two old size yogis, they can go and change the tire for him because we are busy, isn't it? Yes. So I said to my dad, I'm very busy right now. They can go and change the tire for you. And they did. They went and changed the tire for him. And I remained there, rubbing mother's feet. Mm -hmm. So, ah, I got lost. What was the question? You asked me a question? No, no, it was just because uh, this was uh, when she came back, right? From Spain and that she was there. And uh, basically the, the question is how you kept on coming onto the programs because you were already living the ashram. In the ashram, right? yes. I started living straight away, yes. Yeah. And then after that, your parents came back to Sahaj or, or not really? After that incident, 
with rubbing of the feet, they were a little bit cautious, you know. Mm -hmm. They were not, I don't know, I think Sahaj was too much for the head. It mm -hmm. was a bit too much for my head also at times. <laughs> <laughs> And, now, and after that, after Robin Shimata just fit the pain in the left oh side. Oh my God, the, the whole pain disappeared. It was fantastic, you know. Mm -hmm. So I asked mother, is this gone forever, forever, forever? Because I've been rubbing my left for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And mother said, no, this is the start of it, you know. So you are going to have to work a lot on that, pro on that problem. It will take you many years to improve that completely, to overcome that obstacle, you see. Later, mm -hmm. I understood this is called ego, that problem, that mm -hmm. pain in that, on the left side of the forehead. So this was the beginning of the process, when you start doing puja to mother. Uh, gradually, your ego improves, you know. And when did it come like the recognition to Shumataj? Like she's I'm sorry? The, when came, did it come like the recognition who Shumataj was, she had the Shakti? I feel my recognition to mother came the first time I saw her. Okay. Because of that experience, she was like the mother of the universe. She had been like a mother to me already in mm -hmm. previous lives, although I never met her, of course, but somehow like a divine mother. That was the recognition that she was someone like a universal mother mm -hmm. that had already been there throughout existence, since the beginning of life. All my previous lives, she was like uh, guiding all the seekers, for sure, and helping humankind. So I felt this was my first revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, when mother gave me that self-realization workshop, you know, and I went blind and, you know, temporarily blind with the Netrashan <laughs> and the whole thing, that was another state of recognition. But uh, when I ran the, those 10 miles at fast speed, you know, down the hill and up the hill mm -hmm. to meet her, I got some recognition of mother from that. I thought this realization she gave me last night, well, mm -hmm. a few hours ago she had given me all that workshop and now I'm running like I'm a hero yeah. or, a, or like I'm a, a top athlete even, you know. I thought, there's something about this lady Mataji that's extraordinary, you see. Mm -hmm. But uh, even that dream that happened after seeing her photo mm -hmm. about Christ, you know, Mother fulfilled one of my prayers that I wanted to meet Christ and the first time her photo enters my room, Mm -hmm. That night, it's as if I met Christ for the first time. Mm -hmm. And basically, mm -hmm. he told me to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which <laughs> led me to go and see her. Yeah. And then she said, you told me to go to jail also. Mm -hmm. Although I never went because mm -hmm. there came the presidential amnesty. But still, uh, all this was part of the gradual uh, recognition of mother. Mm -hmm. And then when mother went to England, then I'm still there with the Sahaja Yogis, then there's more experiences, more, uh, more challenges, you know, more miracles, more incidents. And every time you start recognizing the power of Mother, the power of Sahaja Yoga, the mm -hmm. power of Sahaja techniques, I was cured. I couldn't even walk, now I'm running, you know. Mm. I was feeling terrific, no pain in the head. I felt like a new person. I had two more exams to do for my course, three in fact. But mm -hmm. two of them I didn't even study, I just went and passed the exams like that. No revision, nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, my God, this is something incredible. I thought it was invincible, you know. So it really started to transform your life, yes, right? Yes, yes, completely, you know. And when did Shumadir ask you to, go, to come to London? Before leaving, she warned me that uh, if ever you have a big problem, come and speak to your aunt, you know. So... Your Portuguese aunt. My Portuguese yeah. aunt. Mm -hmm. She said, as a person with a good heart. Mm -hmm. She was the one who asked for self-realization for her son in jail. And so, you know, after Shimataji left, I received a letter to, uh, to go into the military, to start my military training. Mm. That's a big problem. So, and Shimataji also told me, when she worked on me, that I have a serious heart problem. I knew that. I never told her. I was amazed she knew that. How she knows, but she knew. I used to have a heart problem from young age, of pains, deep pains in the heart. They used to call it angina. That's mm. what they called it. And they used to say, the doctor used to say, you know, this will grow out of you as you get older, possibly, but right now you have that heart problem, you see. But uh, I was surprised mother knew. She said, you have a serious heart problem. And my instinct was telling me, I'm, too, I'm not well enough to do my military training. 
because mm -hmm. one of my brothers had a heart attack in the military training. Wow. So, you know, very intense. This very could happen to me also, you know. And she, but as she warned me, I have a heart problem. She told me to get advice from my from my aunt if I have a problem. And so I asked my aunt, you know, what to do with this. I received my letter to present myself in two weeks in my regiment and start military training. She said, there's a solution, you know. She found out there is a solution. And she said, I, I could make an appeal. And it takes a year and a half for the appeals to be decided because uh, there's a huge pile of admi administrative delay in, in those processes, you know. Mm -hmm. there, there are not that many military judges in Portugal, you know. So the delay was a year and a half. After a year and a half, they will decide your case probably that you have to do your military training. But meanwhile, you gain some time. Yeah. You can improve your health. You can do what you want. And I decided to go to London to see Sri Mataji. Mm. You know, which is also a way of staying away from the military in case the jeep <laughs> appears in the, at my door to take me to the military training, you know. So because at, at that two time weeks, in Portugal... You time was ticking. I had two weeks okay. now to join the military. I made an appeal. But, you know, what if it doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, the jeep appears on your door, they knock at your door at 5 a.m. and you are on the jeep. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't appear on time, they come and get you, yeah. see. Yeah. So I felt... I'm going to go to London to see Sri Mataji. And that's what I told my mom and dad. I'm going to London to see Sri Mataji. Mm -hmm. But my mom knew otherwise. My mom told me, actually, you are going to London to get married, she said. Mm. I said, no, come on, please, mom, you know, what's <laughs> this, you know. I'm going to London to meet Sri Mataji. I need to speak to her. Yes, you need to speak to her, but I know you're going to London to get married, my mom told me. Really? No, that's the last thing on my mind. Going to London to see Sri Mataji. You'll see, you'll see. I know what I'm talking about. And she told me, yes, I know you are going to, lo to, to London to get married. I had forgotten, you see, because as a child, <clears throat> there were some competitions at the zoo for singing competitions for children. Mm -hmm. And I used to sing a song which was Oh Carol and a romantic song mm -hmm. to a, a girl called Carol. And somehow I kept winning those competitions as a child. <laughs> and in summer at the casino, there was a casino at the beach, mm -hmm. there was the same competition there at the casinos. I kept winning those competitions year after year after year. I always sang the same song, Oh Carol, you know. And uh, I was a kid, very young, five, six, seven, eight years old, that those competitions were there. I was winning those competitions. Sometimes my relatives used to ask me, <clears throat> so when you grow up, do you want to join the Air Force or the Marines or the Army? Which one do you want? Because Portugal was having lots of wars with the colonies in, in, uh, in, uh, in, Africa. in Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. So we were being... Uh, program to go and join the armed forces and fight for the country, be mm -hmm. proper citizens, you know, to defend the country, to defend <laughs> the homeland, you know. It was a lot of nonsense. Mm -hmm. But I used to answer, I can't, I can't go to either of those things, neither army, neither navy, neither air force, because I need to go to London and to get married, and my wife is called Carol. That's what I used to say. I said that for so many years. And then I got so many slaps for being a coward and a, you know, <laughs> not wanting to defend my country that I stopped saying these things. And I forgot about it, completely mm -hmm. erased. So my mom said those things, you know, that actually you are going to London to get married. You know, so I went to London to see Sri Mataji. My wedding was arranged quite fast. Sri Mataji helped arrange the wedding for me. And so tremendous news, you know. I need to call my mom to tell her the great news and also to invite her for the wedding. So I rang my mom and my dad, you know, and uh, mom, I have great news. My mom says, stop, stop, don't tell me, I'll tell you the news. You are get, going to get married it's very soon, isn't it? Yes, mom. How did you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you've been telling me all your life, have you forgotten or what? Oh, that. Not even I believed in that anymore. <laughs> that stuff, you see, so many years ago when I was a kid, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, you know, yes, oh, the lady in question is very nice, very nice. Uh, stop, stop, don't tell me. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you her name. Her name is Carol, isn't it? <laughs> yes, her name is Carol. <laughs> but you haven't met her Sorry? yet, no? At that time. 
No, no. But I knew the name. Yeah. It was Carolina. Okay, you knew so, the name at least. <laughs> in the end, it worked. But uh, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How Shirmataji made this dream that I had from such young yeah. age. I, I don't call this a prophecy, I call it more like a dream. You know, and uh, somehow Mother made this dream possible for me. This was important to avoid the military service. I needed to get married soon to obtain British citizenship so that I could avoid the uh, military service once the once I'm called again because sooner or later the appeal is going to be decided against me because I did not qualify. Mm -hmm. The appeal could not win. The appeal was a delayed delay process trying to delay things for me. Mm -hmm. It gave me some time to come to London, get married, yeah. the whole thing. My aunt was a great advice mother gave me and she said, <laughs> if you have any problem, ask that lady. Yes, she she had the ways, right? She had the contacts with the army to yeah. find how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And she knew the information is you appeal, even though you don't qualify, because they take a year and a half to decide. A year and a half gives you time. You either improve your health or you do something about it. And I did yeah. something about it. I came, to, I came to talk to mother <laughs> and, and got married. But tell us a, a bit about the, the marriage. Like, how it was actually to meet no? your future wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I was in the ashram and then uh, I saw some road. And the side yogi told me, oh, look, uh, the mother is on the phone for you. Mother's on the phone for me, I assume this must be my mom. So I answered the phone in Portuguese, hello mom, you know, in Portuguese. Hello, and she, mat and she mat as you said, it's me, Nirmala, your mother. <laughs> ah, yes. So, mother had arranged the meeting for me to go and meet Carol. <clears throat> so that day, uh, another such yogi took me all the way to, to where she was living, which was a place called, called Brighton, in fact, the ashram. Mm -hmm. I was going to meet her at the ashram in Brighton and um, has arrived there a very, very polite lady with a tremendous great sense of protocol. In fact, she was a barrister, you see. She talked with such authority, you know. So when she arrived, she she bowed down, she welcomed, welcomed me and, you know, and I was terrified because, you know, she might as yet told me that my wife <coughs> was a little bit older than I, so I knew that, you know, but this lady was at least, she was 55 years old or something, you know, <laughs> so I got such a fright, such a shock, you know. Required a lot of surrender, I suppose. Oh my God, I felt like throwing away the flowers, you know, it's this, <laughs> I knew she was going to be a little older than I, but this is too much, you and know. And you were like 22, right, at the time? At the time I was 23. 23. 23 okay. years old, so this lady was... So ancient, you know. <laughs> and she told me, oh no, I'm not the bride. I'm the one, I'm the friend of the bride. I'm here to introduce you to the bride. Oh my God. <laughs> what a fright, you know. <laughs> but after that, it went wonderfully. Amazing. Like a miracle after that. Amazing. And then there was, uh, you, you got married like um, in a church, right? Yes, we, we ended up getting married in the church. Rimataji knew that there was a purpose for that because uh, Carol's parents, mm -hmm. uh, they were missionaries, you know, they had gone to India to spread Christianity there. Mm -hmm. My wife was born in India too, you know, but now she's a Sajogini. So he felt on that occasion that if we went to marry at their church, they would then reciprocate and come to Sahaj meetings themselves. Mm -hmm. We were hoping they would come to Sahaj meetings and get their realization, you know. So that was the, the reason for having it there, mm -hmm. to create a kind of a diplomatic exchange, you know. Mm -hmm. We got their shirts, then they come to Sahaj meetings, you know. So that was our intention. Uh, Sri Mataji understood that. <clears throat> and she actually invited all the Sahaj yogis to come to our wedding. Not all came, because <laughs> it's a big distance, we were there in Brighton, mm -hmm. but lots, lots came, thanks to Mother's invitation. Amazing. And that somehow changed the atmosphere of the, of the event, having so many such yogis present. Mm -hmm. It kind of lifted Did your up. parents come, come from yes, Portugal? Yes, they came. Okay. They came. Okay. Yes. Amazing. So, and I mean, it was nice also that Shimataji came to the church and vibrated, I, I, I suppose, the, the whole... No, Shimataji didn't come. Oh, to she didn't come, okay. She had a, 
some uh, diplomatic meeting that day, in fact, oh, right. a very important meeting. She was not free, she had to be with her husband. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. She said she could see me the next day if I wanted, or a few days after, you know. And she did. Mm -hmm. In fact, we met Shimataji. Five days later, we met her. It wasn't it? I think it was just two. Sorry? Just two days. Two days later, it was, yes. Two days later, we actually saw Shimataji. Mm -hmm. Because she came then to meet us. That day, she had a diplomatic meeting. Mm -hmm. She was not free. Okay. And, and, and who are who are we that she should come to our, to our wedding? But <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's life. Yeah, yeah. She was very polite, saying she was busy. I believe. No, but it was interesting because we were talking to Maria Mella, and Maria Mella. I mean, she also didn't know much the protocol at that time. She invited Nachimata to her marriage, so that's why I was yes. uh, thinking that at that oh, time yes. it would be possible not this to happen as well. Not in our case, no. Okay. But we met Nachimata two days after. You know. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. That was nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then you stayed. You stayed in England from... Yes, I'm still here. Because then I got another letter of invitation. Not invitation. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> I was asked to present myself much later mm -hmm. in, um, <clears throat> in my regiment to start training. Because mm -hmm. a year and a half later, my case was decided against me. So I had to present myself. So I received a letter to come and do, do my military training. I was worried about that, so I went to see Shimataji. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shimataji asked me to go through the rules. So what are the rules, you know? Oh, what are the ways to delay this a little bit? I said one possible one is to join the university again, because mm -hmm. they always postpone the military service for a university course. Mm -hmm. Shimataji said, that's terrific, that's wonderful, you know. So do that, you know. Meanwhile, my British passport will come through. I was also waiting for my British passport to be decided. I had applied. Mm -hmm. And it happened. While I was studying at university here, my what passport... What did you study? Sorry, one year. It was a post-graduation, one year. Ah, post-graduation, okay. You know. It was also related to law? It was law. In fact, Shimataji okay. said I should study international law. Okay. So I, I studied international law of the, international law of the sea. That's okay. Because SCP was also was oh, an expert yeah, 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 in the international yeah, the sea, you know. Industry. And she told me at the interview, you must mention CCP. That's very important. Don't mm -hmm. forget to talk about CCP during your interview because to get a place in a course, you need to have an interview. Mm -hmm. It's not a bureaucratic process. There's an interview as well. So at the interview, I, I got my place, and I spoke quite a lot about CCP. Mm -hmm. In fact, my teacher said because he was an expert in the international law of the sea, like CCP. Of course, CCP is higher than him, but he was mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. a, an expert in the international law of the sea. And he said, uh, I feel very, very sad that you are going to be my student, because I'm offering you a place. And you have met CCP, and I have not. Oh. And this is the man I admire the most. There's not a higher person for me wow. in the legal field than this gentleman, you know. And you are just a student. And you have met him, and I have not met him, you see. But I'm going to do something about it. Mark my words, he said to me. Okay. I'm going to send him my book, signed book, because he wrote many books of International Law of the Sea. I'm going to send him my, my book to him, and from there we progress. I will invite him to be a professor honoris causa of uh, this university. Uh, so that was the outcome. So this happened. Wow. You know, he invited CCP to be a professor honoris causa of that University of Cardiff, you see. Wow. You can see that on his record. It's there. And she she came as well, you know. And I had just done my exams, you know. Then she uh, she met my professor and CCP. They had to because they were making a big ceremony in honor of CCP to make him professor honoris causa of that uh, university, you know. Mm -hmm. So Shimataji met him and everything, then I saw Shimataji at the airport. And Shimataji tells me, congratulations on your exams. You got the best mark in three exams out of four, so well done. And I said, mother, this is a misunderstanding. I don't believe it, because the results are not yet out. <laughs> you must have heard maybe a rumor somewhere. And I said, no, I didn't hear any rumor, I'm telling you what's happening. You got oh. the best marks in three exams out of four. Congratulations. I said, Mother, the exams, the results are not yet out. <laughs> it cannot be. I'm telling you, and you're telling me it cannot be. I've been speaking to your professor. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> 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 of 
she might as well ask me about me, you know. <laughs> so mother got my results before they were published and made available to us, you know. What a small world this yeah. is. <laughs> mother knows everyone. <laughs> mother meets everyone. Tell us a little bit, like, how was the, the life in Cardiff? There is also a nice story about a counselor that you had yes, to meet. Yes, uh, <clears throat> because my law course was going to be in Cardiff. Mm -hmm. Srimata, as you said, that's a wonderful place. She loves that place. And in fact, we also invited Srimata to come for a public program. Mm -hmm. So Srimata, as you said, she would come. She loves Cardiff. And she came. It was actually Carol's birthday. Mother arrived on, on her birthday <laughs> in 1984 and she gave that Cardiff talk. Nice. But Mother had been to Cardiff before and she gave a talk there in 1979. Mm -hmm. And this talk was arranged by one of her relatives, one of her nephews, and they arranged everything for Mother as if he's a size yogi because he understood who Mother is, you know, so mm -hmm. he arranged everything. And Mother stayed there for a week, Mother went to visit the whole place, got to... So Mother loved Cardiff, she also liked uh, Swansea as well, she liked it very much. Mm -hmm. She liked Wales. Mm -hmm. She said that uh, many people and scholars, some scholars say that the Welsh language comes from Sanskrit. Oh, really? But the mother said, in actual fact, she realized it comes from Marathi. Mm. Because seeing uh, written down or the name, name places, for instance, she could see this is all related to Marathi language, not Sanskrit. Oh. It's possible that Marathi is also is related to Sanskrit, yeah, but uh, yeah. according to mother, it was much more directly related to Marathi than, um, than Sanskrit. And she said that after the Mahabharata wars, mm -hmm. lots of, uh, or before or around that time, lots of Indian people emigrated out of India during mm -hmm. those disturbances. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very possible that people came from Maharashtra Mm -hmm. And they settled in that area of Wales. Wow. And so that language then, you know, is related still today. A little bit with Marathi, much more than Sanskrit, like some scholars might say. Mm -hmm. But she loved Cardiff. And uh, the thing about her nephew there, she, might, she had arranged this marriage also. Mother had uh, made a nice marriage for him. He was very happy. Mm -hmm. He asked mother to find him a lady. It was hard to find him a wife because he had a very difficult requirement. Mm -hmm. He wanted a woman that is very smart for business, very huh? intelligent, <laughs> very good knowledge of mathematics and economics. So this is quite a hard requirement to find. But mother is an expert uh -huh. and she found him just the right, nice lady, very educated, but with a great mind for business. Mm -hmm. He was doing very well in his businesses. He was an entrepreneur, you know. But they had tremendous love for mother, you know, just like such yogis do. And a great understanding of the importance of our spiritual mission, you know. I only discovered how much they understood that later. So, <clears throat> because of how much they had done for mother, mother said, uh, this is a big, going a problem, because mother is coming on the 8th of August, 1984. And mother had an important appointment the next day in London mm -hmm. with some uh, diplomatic work she had as a wife of a great diplomat. She had to be present, you know, so she could only go to Cardiff for giving a talk and then going back home on a train, come by train and go back. Mm -hmm. So, but she wanted to spend some time with the relatives because they looked after yeah, her so well when mm -hmm. she stayed with them and they did a wonderful Sahaj program back in 1979, even Sahaj Yogis Mm -hmm. were not organizing programs for her in England like, like yeah. he did, you see. So, <clears throat> he's a very special person, and I want to go and meet them. And since I cannot come to their home, because that they have to take the train back straight away after the program, I wanted to go and visit, visit them on my behalf, so they are representing me. So, you have to be very formal have to be on your best behavior, no nonsense, make sure you behave well. <laughs> <coughs> and um, another important thing she told me, you cannot give them my message, because I have a message for them. Mm -hmm. It's an important message of love, but you cannot give it just like that on the phone, or by letter, or give it to a third person for them to tell what I said. Mm -hmm. No, you have to see them in person at their home, because you go oh. and see them. It's a little bit as if mother is visiting them, which yeah. is what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So this represents mother going there symbolically, so to say. I'm not a, not a great. I'm not a great representative. In fact, I got in trouble. 
<laughs> because on the same day that we, I, I, first of all, I asked Shimatazi, can you give me the address or phone number? Shimatazi said, no, I don't know where that is. You know, mother moves so much. She's always moving house and traveling all over the world. I don't know where it is, but don't worry. It's just, it will come to you. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. We have never been to Cardiff and then now you need to find the address <laughs> of mother's relatives there. <laughs> oh my God. But in fact, we you thought you are very smart. He used to be a counselor. He was a counselor, mother told us. Mm -hmm. We knew his name, he's a counselor. We got the counselor and asked for the name of this counselor. It couldn't be easier. Except that he was no longer a counselor, but even if he was, he had stopped being a counselor. He was just doing his business now. Businesses, let's say. And uh, besides, they don't give the addresses of counselors or ex counselors. They can't by law. So she also didn't know the address of she them? She forgot. Uh, okay. You know, they moved house, you know. She met him in a different place. It's mm -hmm. some years, many years ago, between 1979 and 84. Meanwhile, he had moved houses uh, several times. She didn't have, he had moved. Didn't have his address, didn't have the phone number. And uh, we asked in the council, what else can we do? We don't have any connections, we don't know anyone. And so, nothing. So, we started the public program of Saj Yoga. And one of the first people that comes, she, it's an Indian lady, she saw mother's photo. Oh, this is the lady, Mataji, from, uh, from Council of Arma. You know, I work for him. Oh, really? Oh, my God. So. Now we are sorted. Mm -hmm. She said, so I want the address of Council of Arma. Oh, right. Why? Oh, I have a message for him. Right. Give me the message. I give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you know. So, so Council of Arma heard that I have a message from Srimataji for him. He's very anxious to get the message. You know? mm -hmm. But he has to wait another week for the, because the public meetings, you know, next week. She comes, you know, I can't give the message, then she gives me the address <laughs> and the phone number. So I contact him. We arranged for a meeting, you know, so the meeting was arranged. On the day of the meeting, it's just an accident. My wife got a job interview. It was so hard to get a job. We could not really miss that opportunity. It was a good job, job interview, you know, how can mm. we bypass this, you know? So she went for the interview. Yeah. Uh, and I went with the baby, four months old, to the great meeting <laughs> with <laughs> Councillor Varma, <laughs> with the Councillor and his wife. Well, just before going into the meeting, I gave as much milk as I could to the baby, he was only four months old. And I told him, you know, and I asked Mother, please, don't ask for an happy change or cry and shout and scream on the, on the pusher. We are going to stay on the pusher. Stay quiet there. I don't want any nappy changes or cryings or, or, we, or noises. This is a very important meeting, a very quick meeting, five, ten minutes. I have a message from mother. That's it. You understand? He's four months old. I think mm -hmm. he said yes. <laughs> I asked mother to, to help. And there we go, with the baby on the pusher. And uh, Councillor Varma, he was not there. He had a delay. In fact, he had a flood in one of his businesses. Wow. So, but he, he was very anxious to get this message of mother because he had been waiting now for two or three weeks. And he, his wife was telling me, we can't even sleep. You are so anxious to get the message from mother. And it's taking so long, you know, and why can't you tell us the message? Why is it so important, so serious? I mean, we are getting worried now. Mm -hmm. You know, please, please, please give us the message, you know. I can't. I promised mother I wouldn't give the message except to Council of Arma, you see. He has to be present at your house, not over the phone, not by letter, not by a third person. I can not even tell you the message to you to tell to your husband. So oh. I can't, you know. So all right, we'll wait for Council of Arma because we had a flood. It's a big, serious problem at work. Mm -hmm. And we waited and waited and waited and waited. Maybe seven hours later came a, another call from him saying, it's not going to be possible to to have the meeting today. Let's do it next week, you know. So that's it. But while I was there, his wife was very polite, and she kept giving a very strong chai. It's a, it's a special tea that you cook the tea bags in a pan. You cook the tea bags, mm -hmm. several tea bags. You cook them in a pan with milk and sugar, and and that is such a strong tea, you know. And I'm allergic to caffeine and to even tea. I cannot drink tea. 
only decaffeinated things mm -hmm. at the most mm -hmm. very weak at the most one decaffeinated cup of tea I, otherwise my heart mm -hmm. I start shaking or having palpitations in the heart you know it's very dangerous for me but since I had to be on my best behavior very politely I accepted all the cups of tea <laughs> so I was waiting there for six seven hours you know and every half an hour she'd offer me another cup of tea and tell me look my husband is about to arrive he'll be here in five minutes you know it was a chai right the chai. So, it was chai. chai. And so I don't know how many cups of tea she gave me when every half an hour I was there for six or seven hours, you know. And very politely, because I was supposed to be on a good behavior, I told myself, you see, I come here with a baby. You know, this is not the way to come for an important meeting. And now at least I'll tell her, well, I don't like chai, you know. I don't drink chai, only what? Mm -hmm. I had to be polite. I drank all the tea. And I thought, this is an incredible miracle because I feel terrific. It's not having any effect on me. I'm not shaking, I'm not anything. I had a cup of tea once or twice to be polite with other people and I felt terrible. Now here I have God knows how many cups of that strong, strong chai and I feel ter terrific, you know. This is like a miracle you now. And the miracle is that the baby waited there, sitting on the pusher, tied to the pusher all those hours. You know, I gave him a bottle of milk once and twice or twice there. He didn't want any food, any water, nothing. No milk, no nappy change, never got out of us to come out of the pusher to climb and go everywhere and do all the sorts of things he does, you know. No shouting, no screaming, nothing. It's just like, and this uh, the lady, Mrs. Varma, she's saying, I've never seen a child like this, you know. She sits there like a little Buddha in, in meditation, <laughs> you know. Very happy, yes, he drank some milk, no doubt, but... Uh, it's amazing and it's extraordinary what you must, must have some secret <laughs> must be this Sahaj meditation maybe you know she was very surprised mm -hmm. in the end came the last call that uh, we can no longer have the meeting so I went home mm -hmm. I was sitting at the bus stop you know it's getting a bit late that area hardly has any buses there so one of the neighbors of, uh, of uh, Councillor Varma came and told me, look, I'll give you a lift to town, I'll take you home, because mm -hmm. uh, you could be waiting here for hours for a bus with, uh, with a child on a pusher, you know. So we had a big car, like a, one of those big, uh, big, big jeeps, so the pusher went into the car, the baby still in the pusher, and they, they took us home, long distance, but they took us home, you know. I said, that is amazing, you know, what a strange day. Extraordinary, what a miracle. The baby mm -hmm. never shouted and, sc and screamed. I didn't have to change an nappy there. The baby didn't start crawling up all over the place, you know, taking all the books out of the shelves, the things they do, you know, or God knows what babies can do. And I said, this is unbelievable. What is more? I'm feeling terrific with all this tea. So I said to Carol, to my wife, let's go for a walk. I've, not, I've never felt this good in my life. Went for a park, I saw the park and I said, oh my God, I'm gonna have a big run here. <laughs> I'm gonna jog now. First time in my life, I start running around the park and running and running and running and running <laughs> and telling Carol, I don't know what's happened to me. I'm like a new person, you know. This is a, a new discovery for me. I mean, I didn't know I was such a great athlete, I'm a great runner. And running, 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 Carol, come on, stop, 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 you better stop and rest. No, I don't need to rest, you know. I can go on forever. And kept running, running, running. And then suddenly I got a pain in the heart and I said, Oh my God, this is it. This is the end, my friend. I'm having a heart attack. I didn't know what to do, so I said, You know what? I might just have enough time to walk to the phone box and ask mother for help, maybe, I knew her number, so I rang mother, you know. And the Sahaja Yogi answered the, answered the phone, Sahaja Yogi there, and they said, Louis, today is really bad luck for you. <laughs> mother has just left this minute, and she won't be back for two days, you know. It's a big international conference, she has to go. I'm so sorry, you know, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you now. <laughs> There's nothing can do for me. <laughs> so I decided, I don't want to die here in the streets. <laughs> Maybe I can walk home very slowly and then die at home. If I'm lucky, walking slowly, walking slowly. I was walking for five minutes. Suddenly the pain is gone and I feel like I could actually run if I wanted to. <laughs> it was back to normal, you know.
<laughs> no pain. So I said, you know, Carl, we go back slowly and ring again mother's house and tell them, don't tell this message, don't give this message of mine to mother when she comes back. She'll be worried about my heart and there's nothing. I'm feeling well. And uh, Antonio says, it's too late now. I already told mother. <laughs> what? Yes, she's sitting down here giving a bandage. <laughs> but did you say she went? Yes, she went. But uh, SCP forgot very important papers, documents. She's upstairs looking for them. And mother is waiting for him. And she's just sitting down here next to the phone, giving you bandanas oh. for the last five minutes, you know. <laughs> so I think you'll survive. Mother says you'll be fine. She's saying you'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> So oh. that's when I realized these people, mother asked me to go and meet. Mm -hmm. They were special. Mother already said that, but uh, they also told me whenever they have any problem, even health, serious health problem, they don't ring mother, they don't call mother, they never disturb her. They know how important the work she's doing, that they feel that all they have to do is think of her and think of her and somehow all, the problem, all their problems get solved. So they have an understanding of what mother can do from a big distance even, without even telling her. So they were much higher than uh, I realized, much higher than I for sure, but <laughs> much higher than I understood. In fact, my understanding was very limited. There's a problem, you call mother, they don't call mother, they just think of her, mm -hmm. and they know mother solves that problem. So uh, it was a lesson for me to, to meet those people, really, the amount Amazing. of uh, miracles that happened. Amazing, so it's really like the this power not that's everywhere kind of to protect you and you had this experience almost dying <laughs> let's say the powers of mother are, yeah. are unbelievable she has powers if she wants to use them mm -hmm. her powers are infinite really i remember one incident at the um, airport mm -hmm. you know mother was standing there for a long time because there were so many people queuing up to give her flowers so this was creating a a little bit of a disturbance at the airport between suddenly lots of flights arrive at the same time there's lots of people with their trolleys and suitcases mm. and all the sash yogis are there you know sitting quiet with their hands out and their flowers waiting a long time and the security guard felt that you know we need to push these people out of here mm -hmm. because it's somehow blocking the flow a little bit you know so he told sash yogis you know please move please move please get out of here sash yogis don't react we all pretended that it's not important. <laughs> we are here to, to meet mother, you know. We have our flowers, we have to give our flowers to mother. They don't budge, they, mm -hmm. don't, they don't budge at all. But the security guard, he was, I don't know, probably seven foot tall. And the width of his hips and the, the width of his, of his shoulders is like a, a tree, you know, a monster of a man. The size of his boots was terrifying even. What the size of a man. <laughs> he lost patience. A giant. And he started pushing. There was a, at, the, at the back of the queue to see mother, there was lots of ladies with the pushchairs. He started pushing the women up into the air almost, and the pushchairs with the babies. Oh Left God. and right, and sit, he lost patience. The Sajoginish, they just put the pushchair back on as it should. No reaction. They sit there all the same, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. That's it, Sajj Yoginis are not afraid, they're not terrified, nobody died, that's it, they just, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't mind, they were pushed out of, uh, almost like flying in the air, the strength of that man. So, I decided I have to speak to this man, very politely, I go back, I go <laughs> straight to this man, I touch him on the shoulder, sir, may I have a word, you know, he said, did you touch the uniform? Oh, he no. says to me, yes sir, I, I I touched the uniform, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say something. If ever you touch the uniform, you show me the size of his boot, your head will be under my foot and you'll be smashed to bits. Oh my God. And suddenly I felt two people holding my arms, you know. These were two size yoginis, you know. They were holding my arms and say, Louis, leave the man in peace, come, come. And they pushed me backwards, pushed me backwards, <laughs> don't talk to him. Because they, they had seen what they can do. He pushed the ladies and the push chairs and the babies into the air. He was showing me what he could do with his foot, you know. And I wanted to speak to him to explain to him that this is Srimataji, you know, a great, uh, important lady, this and that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, but they didn't let me. They held me back until the man disappeared. So he carried on. He kept going and he was pulling people left and right, left and right, pushing everybody with brutality. Then he arrived in front of mother. And I was coming behind him. After a while, the, the ladies uh, left, left. This Sajugin has released me. So mm -hmm. I went back be behind him, you know, trying to catch him. But he's going so fast. <laughs> Try, he's going so fast, pushing everybody left and right with an animal. What a beast of a man. <laughs> and he arrives. He's getting very close to mother. And mother makes a face that is one of the most horrifying faces I've ever seen. Oh my God. As if mother is a lion or something, you know. Mother can do these faces, you know. Do you know what this man did? Uh. He bent down in half and ran away and went away. Oh my he also, God. I don't know what he saw in mother's face. I saw it from that distance behind him. And I was terrified. What face mother made is as if she turned into a lion or something. The man, he must have seen something because, yeah, yeah. tall as he was, he bent himself into half <laughs> as if he's like a hunchback, very little man, and like this, he walked away and disappeared. This is what mother can do if she, if she wants to, when she wants to. <laughs> I could not stop that man, but mother can. <laughs> mother get, got rid of him like that. What a, an amazing thing she can do. Amazing. Uh, I mean, the things mother can do is an ending, you know. Uh, there was one occasion, uh, I was at Shalsham Road and the message came, those who are free, if you want to come and uh, come to mother's house and help to shift some furniture. Mother wants to shift some furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an expert, I'm not that strong, but you know, it's just to go and see mother's house, go back to mother's houses, one never says no. Mm -hmm. So I've done this type of things. Shifting furniture, you know, at mother's house, you know, ashrams, you know, so I said I'm qualified. So I went, I was the only one that went, the message went around, no one else came. So there was a Saj Yogi there, it's much stronger, you know, and there's building work. I said, so this is it. <laughs> and the only one that came, he already know. he knows I'm not that strong after all. So, oh my God, he was not very pleased that I'm the one who came, you know. The task was very hard, very hard task. Shimataji came and told us, look, time is very short, tomorrow I'm going on an international tour mm -hmm. and I want to get this sorted before I go. I need all that furniture from the attic to be put, taken into a van so it can be taken away for storage. Mm -hmm. Lots, lots of uh, boxes, big boxes full of books, full of china. There's nothing heavier than books and mm. china, you know. It's unbelievable. The weight of that is like the weight of stone or the weight of wood. The books are like yeah, yeah. the weight of wood of books is like the weight of pretty much yeah. of books of stone of wood. You know the books. We could hardly lift those boxes. Now we have to go from the attic because we cannot use the front door for security. You have to go from the attic all the way down, then go down into the basement. Then at the basement there's some metal little steps, circular steps like this to come into the ground floor and then take it to the van and put them on the van. You couldn't even hardly oh lift the box. How many people are uh, helping you? Me only and the, the guy, the, the Sash Yogi, was a lot stronger than I. I said, look, what you can do is take two of us, take the box, you know, if we take the box together, two of us, it makes it easier maybe that yeah, way you yeah. can do it. He said, no way. I take one box, you take one box. This mother said we are in a rush. He could just about do it, and he's much stronger than I. And I don't know. I mean, this was an impossible job, you know. I think we took a couple of boxes, and then he went to the kitchen and drank tea, and that's it. <laughs> Mother arrived and saw us. Okay, so we finished. That's great. Well done. I said, Mother, we only did two boxes so far. <laughs> it's, very, it's very heavy. Very heavy? They're not heavy at all, Mother says. At all. This is nothing, you see. Please, you know, I told you. It's a big rush. I have to go on tour tomorrow. I want that sorted. Please uh, make sure it doesn't get takes too long or gets too late. Suddenly it will become dark. Be careful. Mm -hmm. I want this done before it gets dark. Very important. All right, so we should start it again. With great difficulty, we took another two boxes. All the way from the attic, all the way, several floors, then to the basement, then up the metal stores, metal steps like this, you know, like a, a spiral, you know. Mm -hmm. Two boxes more we did, you know, with great difficulty, without scratching the wallpaper because or spoiling the carpets, you know, these, uh, these boxes have uh, rough edges, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, this is a, how can we do the whole room, you see? The attic, you know, the amount of boxes, the impossible. After doing two more boxes, we went back to the kitchen, sat on the floor resting and another cup of tea. And mother says, ah, congratulations, now you've done it. <laughs> mother, we did another, another two boxes on it. It's impossible. <laughs> they are very heavy. And mother says, actually, they are very light. Very, very light. Please, carry on, carry on. They are very light. I told the guy, this Ajayogi, we should be doing this together, you know, as a team, you know, two people on box, not the box each, it's impossible. No, 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 no sense, we don't have time, let's just, just, let's just do it. All right. We can't work collectively like this, you know. So, it took us the whole day, you know, it became night, we're still trying to do that, you know. Unbelievable stupidity, you know. We never managed to work as a team together, taking two boxes. Mm. Two people take a box or say a mantra together. It's Nothing. It's too heavy for one person, but perhaps light. Two, you time. know, or say a mantra or something. Or as if I remember saying, shall we not say a mantra or something, you know? Because this is impossible. And mother came and said, so you are still doing that job? You know, it's so dark now. I told you not to do it in the dark. Mm -hmm. Why it took the whole day to do something so simple, you know? It's just like Ma Maya, we don't understand what's happening here. It was very... made us think, you know? Well, in the end we emptied the room. That's why it took the whole day, you know, until in the whole night already late, we were still doing that. Should have been done in an hour, Mother said, or less, you know? Wow. And at last we finished that room with great suffering, you know? Absolutely <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Appalling. But it was a humbling experience, you know. It was a good lesson for our ego, we felt. And then, at last, the van is going to go away and the van breaks the key. So, he went to Baba, the key broke inside the van, in the ignition. What shall we do? Oh, well, you can't leave the stuff in the van because this area is full of robbers, you know. <laughs> You have to bring it all back. <laughs> <laughs> now it's worse, now it's uphill. <laughs> See? Now we have to go down into the basement and then go uphill oh, onto no. the attic. But mother, please, we want to sleep in the van overnight. We'd rather sleep in the van. In the van? No way, you can't sleep there. The robbers will take you. Will be taken. <laughs> you know, they'll take the van, they'll take you as well, you'll be finished, you know. No way. You have to empty it out. That's the only solution. It's very easy. This is very light, very light work. Now we knew at last we have to unite. We held hands, the two yogis, and we said a mantra to Sri Anumana. Mm -hmm. We went downstairs. It's absolutely, it's like a miracle. He picked up a, a box, the other guy, and started running with the box. <gasps> the box was empty, you see. You know, I had noticed some boxes may have been empty, that is not. He ran away with that box. That was a lucky one. It was an empty box. All right, may happen. Maybe he had a bit of straw, no, no books, no china, and maybe half empty or nothing in it, just straw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He ran away with that box because time is short, you know. I picked up the box. Oh, that's empty too. So I ran out of that box. We emptied the whole van. The boxes were all empty. Mother's right. It was a very easy job. If only you had done the mantra to Sriyanamana <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning instead of the end. Amazing. In half an hour, his mother was right, in half an hour, all the stuff was back in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> the boxes were all empty. I don't know who does these miracles, you know. Amazing. But before we could not lift, lift them. They, we, checked the, we checked the boxes, we saw, we saw the china there, the plates and forks and scutlery, the way they turned those boxes. The books was even worse, those boxes. And now they're all empty, it seems. Mm -hmm. We just run up the stairs, all of, both of us, fast, 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 done. Half an hour. Incredible. We Incredible. thought, my God, don't forget your mantras yeah. and, and work as a team. <laughs> yeah, mother was right at all times. Such an easy job, such light boxes. Mm -hmm. All very heavy, depends how you do it. Mm -hmm. You try and do it with your ego, can be very hard. <laughs> you try and do it the easy way, it can be very easy. It was a big lesson for us. Wow. That house was full of miracles, the Brompton Square where Mother was living. Brompton Square. That was Brompton Square. There was a time, Mother was also about to go to a, 
uh, conference he was going to stay away for two days, you know. CCP had lots of diplomatic meetings, you know. Mm -hmm. And we said, this is a fantastic opportunity. When mother is out, we can wallpaper an area of the house that needs new paper, you see, and make it really nice. Mm -hmm. Surprise for mother. So mother went, as soon as mother went, we started doing the wallpapering. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a repeat. So and Sir CP knew about it? No. No, Madame Sassipi went. Okay, okay. So it so was a surprise we, for uh, both of them, all right. Yes. Okay. So as soon as they're gone, now we start wallpapering. When they come back, this is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, five minutes later, Sassipi is back. He forgot some pop important documents. <laughs> <laughs> and Mother sees is doing it. I said, oh my God, what are you up to? <laughs> We're doing this wallpaper, Mother. It was a surprise. All right, surprise or no surprise, be careful. There's a small problem, Mother said. Don't do any gap between the papers. Because I don't mind, she said, gaps in the papers. But CCP, he likes things very professionally, so mm -hmm. be careful, no gaps. I said, Mother, no problem, you know. We actually overlap. There's no chance of any gaps. When you overlap, yeah. we're not trying to join them, we actually overlap. There's, there's no chance there'll be any overlaps, any gaps, you know. All right, be careful with the gaps, you know. So we did the whole paper and then mother came back, you know. Next day I'm waiting for mother to come and tell us, congratulations, job well done, wonderful. The mother didn't say anything, so mother, did you like the job? Very much. I liked it very much, but CCP is so a big gap there. Yeah. No mother, there's no gap. We checked it very well, very carefully, there was no gap whatsoever. I said, but I'm telling you there's a gap. There's a gap, there's a gap, you know, what can you do? You tried your best, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, you may have to remove everything again, out, strip it all out, it's already dry by now, and maybe you can start again. Gosh, mother, is there any solution, you know, because, first of all, there's no gap. Mother says, ah, mother lost patience, I'll show you the gap. She took us there, there's the gap. Oh my God, the gap is there. It's, um, it's impossible. It's something they call it shrinkage. Ah, Sometimes so it ties the paper must shrink. have shrunk. Okay. Oh, wow. I can't understand this, but the gap was there. Mother was saying the truth. You know. We looked at each other and said, well, we have to take all this out and start again. Mm. And mother said, wait, maybe with vibrations, maybe we can solve this. Mm -hmm. Just uh, with vibrations, you can push the wallpaper and, uh, you know, get rid of the gap. Just push it. So we pushed it, you know. It's too late, mother, it's dry. It's impossible. I said, no, no, no. You don't understand. With vibrations, you use the vibrations. You must understand you are not doing it with the ego. You are doing it with vibrations. Push it again. We tried a bit more with vibrations. Nothing, the gap is there. Mother, it's too late, it's dry. There's nothing you can do. No, you can. You can do it with vibrations. Let me show you. So mother started pushing the paper. And we were watching, you know, waiting for the gap to go. Let's move. It didn't shift. We said, no, mother, it's too late. It's impossible. I said, you don't have any faith in vibrations. Come on, help me here. So now mother is pushing the paper, and I'm pushing and the mother, and the other guy is taller than me, is going over mother. So mother is pushing the paper. Mm -hmm. There's a taller yogi pushing also, and I'm pushing from underneath. And it doesn't shift, you see. So we felt sorry for mother having mm. to work so hard for this. Mother, it's too late, it doesn't work, you know. I said, oh, you people have no faith in vibrations. You just cannot understand to do things with vibrations. And she went. We went for a meal, because we need to take a big meal, because, you know, we have to strip everything again. Mm. It's all dry, remove everything. It's even work harder now. You have to remove all the papers and start again, you know. We had a big meal at least, fantastic food at mother's house, you know. <laughs> that gives you such courage, you know, and nice cup of tea, you know. Okay, let's start it. We have to strip everything starting from that gap. At least start from there, you know. Mm -hmm. Where's the gap? <clears throat> what gap? Where's the gap? We're looking for the gap on the wallpaper. It's gone. So it's said, mother, there's no gap. Where is the gap? <laughs> now we can find the gap. Oh my I said, yes, I told you, you know. Vibrations can do these things, but you don't believe in vibrations. Wow. While you were eating, the paper moved. <laughs> <laughs> the cup disappeared. 
it was a, a shocking thing. Incredible, incredible. So, I think, thank you so much, Uncle Luis. It was a, a pleasure. I mean, I think it was a great kind of ending also with these this wonderful miracles. And uh, we have to, to meet again to talk about your experience with William Blake. No? I'd love that. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Jay Shumatej. Jay Shumatej. And see you in the next episode.